Got to serve 13 with Alan Killshaw, South Wales on Sunday, but first, just go back to the Oxford game. Uh, slow start, slow in places really. Um, how will you try and avoid that this weekend against South Wales? Yeah, just apart from the first set, which I think we give a penalty away for obstruction, just some time, and the, the start wasn't too bad. We, we, we built some pressure, and that's what we've been talking about, um, building pressure and process, and thought we did that with the ball. I felt after our first try, we seem to switch off and we're having those lapses of concentration and, and that's more of an issue than, than starts the game or ends of the game. Just concentration at back end of sets, uh, especially a couple of last play tries which we mentioned on the day. So we, we've, we're focused on that this week and again trying to get to that, that full 80 minute performance and, and that includes the start, you know, the middle and the end. And, um, I was a little bit critical of them before the London game in terms of we hadn't scored many points in, in last quarters of games um, to lose game barrel game where we, we, we hadn't scored in the last 20 minutes and we, we, we flipped that over the last few weeks uh, against London we scored three or four in the last 20 and then obviously last week so we've got the, the ends of our game right and, and the start I do believe and it's just that, that middle now and and, and, and getting the, that concentration right, you know, throughout throughout the full eighty, everyone's got a job on every play, and um, we need to be switched on for, for the full duration. And there was a, a part in the second half where Stuart Biscom went down with injury. You could see what had been going on, and, and you you went to the side of the pitch and and uh, intervened. I think with a, got the players in for a bit of a an impromptu meeting. Um, how did that come about, and, and how do you think it helped? Yeah, just we, we, we spoke at our time and I think we'd come out and scored again and we just dropped off and just saw that opportunity just, just to get them in and, let, and finish the game well. We, we had a good travelling support there and I didn't think we were doing them justice with our performance and um, doing ourselves justice as well. And We, we just we just got in there and, 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 and spoke about finishing the game strongly and, and, and rewarding those people who travelled up. and. And, and rewarding ourselves for the sacrifices we'd made in the week leading up to it and, and it's a long day and we wanted to put a positive on there you know we were letting a couple of soft tries before then I think they were up to 24 so we just, we just spoke about not letting them score again and, and finishing the game strong and, 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 and the lads reacted well to that. And South Wales on Sunday as we've said uh, they've won just once this season are you worried that maybe they're the duo win and they'll come against top of the league and, and want to topple them. Yeah, we, we spoke about it last week, didn't we? Every, everyone's going to be up for playing Rochdale Hornets at the minute. You know, everyone's going to be up for playing to lose your barrel, the, 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 the teams at the top of the division. Um, you know, South Wales were, were very good against York in, in patches um, a few weeks ago and, 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 and really you know, played some good stuff. Last week, I think they'll be disappointed with the way they went at Barrow. Um, the last of dual registration in themselves this week from Halifax, so so that'll you know increase the quality we've got um, across the park. And look, they, again, they've got nothing to lose. And just on South Wales, um, they had they had quite an impressive season. I think it was 2013. Um, how do you think since then they've they've progressed or, or not progressed? Yeah, it's it's a difficult one. Isn't it? It's a hard area. For, for them to try and develop the game and I think we've had different owners and you know that consistency and all the, the year that they did well um, I mean yeah, Dave Clark was there who did had success with Barrow I think he won a competition with Barrow uh, he went there and, and, they, and they had a, a, a real go at it I know we've got a couple of players you know Samir's played there Ben Halls has, has had a, a bit of a season there as well and um, I think after that year the, the, the budgets were cut and what have you and I, Mike Grady was was there, and I think he did a really good job under some difficult circumstances. You know, it's very tough to get aside, as and they weren't very competitive. And, and, and I think you know, I think they won the first game last year in two years, and you know, it would have been a real hard you know place to be in coach and, and, and to know where you're at. And you know, I do, I do feel that he was maybe a little bit unfairly treated. Where this year they, they brought some owners in and a bit more. Um, you know they've 
they've, they've backed him a little bit more with players and facilities and you know it would have been nice to see Mike have a crack with, with those but obviously the, the, the owners wanted to go in a new direction and, and good luck to him. We want teams in Wales to do well and, and, and teams around here that, that have played and, and been consistent over the last few years and um, well, they've got one win on the board already and hopefully they can get a few more, not against us obviously but um, it would be good to see them doing well. Um, but again, it's going to be a difficult task with with the area that, that they're in because it's, it's a big rugby union area. It's our, it's our 14th game in a row, um, and, and and the lads deserve a lot of credit for for the way they've you know conducted themselves over that 14 weeks. And it's it's a long toll, and there's nobody else who, who's had that um, stretch of games because teams have had buys and they've not done as well as we've done in the cup and. You know, at the minute we're, we're, we're 9 out of 13, uh, or sorry, 11 out of 13, and one of those games was, was witness, and obviously we'll be in the league, so the lads deserve a, a real um, pat on the back for, for that, but we know we, we've got to come and, and perform really well this week to earn the week off next week, and um, our focus will, will, will be, you know, a little bit more on ourselves this week and how we perform, but, you know, we will be looking at South Wales and we won't be taking them lightly at all. And yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, Fourteen games in a row, and then we've got a weekend off next week, a row weekend off. Uh, how will you approach the week? Will you do anything different? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll give the lads some some time off, some time away to to freshen up, get over those bumps and bruises. Um, it's 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 been full on for them as well, and and, and they'll go away and and they'll, they'll, they'll continue to do a little bit of training on their own, but we'll keep them off their feet. We'll come in Tuesday as normal and review you know Sunday's game uh, and train you know quite hard on Tuesday then we'll give the lads um, some time away with the, with the, with the families and, and, and the friends and, and, and whatever they, you know that they'll, they'll do you know on that weekend off and um, we come in then we've got York and then we have another buy so they come at good times for us especially with the, the long stretch of games we've had you know usually it wouldn't be ideal play uh, miss a week play a week miss a week but with the stretch we've had that we've been speaking about and um, consecutive games and um, there's a few of them carrying bumps and bruises and we'll be just glad to, to freshen the group up and, and um, you know be ready for York and, and, and the games following that. Yeah, you mentioned the few knocks, few bumps and bruises. Stuart Bisco obviously got a concuss concussion last week, Jordan Case was it his knee. Um, so the the strength in depth that we've got, the, the depth of the squad will be tested again this week, um, how we approach this selection. Yeah, you know, we spoke about last week, we were a bit down on, on, on middles, um, but we're, we've had Joe Philbin uh, train with us this week and Dan Murray, we've both played with us um, a couple of times already and, and Sam Wilde that we've had once against York. Um, and, and, and Joe and Sam have been playing a little bit of Super League and, and they'll come into the equation this week, we, you know, due to the injuries we've got and, and, and Joe's suspension, um, we've got those guys, you know, reg more regular as well. So they're, they're already integrated into, into the team and, and know what's expected when they when they come down. Um, you know, the, the, the depth has been tested, and, and with the 14, you know, weeks in a row as well, and we knew that would be the case at the start of the year. You know, we knew we didn't have a, a budget as big as other clubs. Um, and, we, and, and we knew that we'd, um, you know, some of the players there who, who we retained from last year um, did take, you know, cuts in pay, and, and we had to, you know, be really good in what what we recruited. I feel that we we did recruit really well, and um, the the squad, you know, it's competitive. There's still quality players being left out this weekend, um, and and you know we we we've, we've done well, and we'll continue to do well, and. Um, hopefully Dave Cookson will be back for York um, an outside chance for York and then he'll be back for Newcastle and Joe will be back so Jack Francis isn't far off as well so we're getting we're getting players back and, and those two you mentioned Stu and Jordan they'll also be um, available for selection following the bye so we're in a healthy position and, and that's considering the, the amount of games we've played and you, you just alluded to, to budget there it's not no, no real secret, the financial position of the club. How do you think we've gone on this season and competed with teams who've, you know, that who have spent a lot more than probably double what we've spent? 
Yeah, there was a couple of teams there, I believe, who were up to that full salary cap this year um, in, our, in our division. And like you say, we, we you know, the, first of all, the lads who we retained from last year, they deserve a, a, a massive rap because they all took pay cuts on, on last year. Obviously, the budget was a bit bigger last year um, coming down from the championship. Um, we, we lost a couple of players you know, um, to other clubs and, and, and to retirements and, and, and to overseas. So um, the lads who stayed deserve that. The lads we've recruited, I think we've done well um, with the players we've brought in and the quality we've brought in. And, um, but you don't need a massive, um, you don't need a high performance budget to have a high performance team. And I, I think we, we, we've done well with what we've got. And, we knew that at the start of the year, and, and we'll, we'll continue to, to start fight, you know, to fight with these 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 teams who've spent, you know, a lot of money and big budgets in a full time and and, who, and whatever. And I think our league position justifies that with the dual registration agreement in place. You know, obviously, people have the different views on that, but when we do have such a small budget, that does help top us up with quality players when we when we need it. So that's another advantage of that. And, and um, you know, all the players are here, and, 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 and they know they're on a you know a level footing really in terms of, of, of what of what we're getting um, in a semi professional environment. And is that is that testament to the the coaching staff that was brought in, and um, you know it, it, it is very much a team off the field as well as on it. It's it's you that sits in front of the camera and does the videos, but there's people like Dave Ramsbottom and Paul Berry, Jason Villa. You were there every week, you know. How how influential have, have they been bringing in knowledge? Oh, huge! You know, um, everyone. It's it's a team effort, like you say. You know, the guys you mentioned, Steve Wordsworth, you know, the analyst. We've got Ryan Gibney, the conditioner, and, and Brian as well at the physio. And, and it is it's very much the team behind the team, and, and you need that, and you need the people working off the field as well, and coaching staff. We all work together, like you say. I you know head that up but you know we, we bounce ideas off each other yeah, Jason Paul and Dave do a lot of uh, the hands on coaching and it, it is a team effort and again um, blogs there who, who aren't on massive amounts of money and they couldn't get it elsewhere but um, they're in this culture, they're in this environment and, and they see what we want to achieve and, and, they're, and they're really motivated by that you know on top of those two you've got Alison and Amy who, who come in and, and, and help us with our rehab on, on match days and, and, and pre-hab you know again people who are just who are volunteering their time and you get a lot of that at this level and, and if we didn't have that you know we'd really struggle and we appreciate you you know of everyone and, and everyone who's, who's working towards that and you know that's one of the main reasons that we're sat on beating at, at the top of the division at the minute that everyone's working towards the same goal and just on a final note um, just wanted to get your thoughts on, on Paul Crary's comments he's been quite uh, critical of the disciplinary committee the, the Barrow coach um, it's echoed stuff that you've said in the past uh, just wanted, wanted to know what you made of them yeah Paul spoke about consistency um, uh, there look it's, it's echo it did echo our thoughts we, we, we want consistency and um, I still don't think we're getting that now that's that can be taking a couple of reasons and how they view the games what games get viewed, who gets cited. Um, for me there is one particular team that seems to be up quite a lot um, at the disciplinary. And, is that to lose? Yeah. And um, there's a lot of dangerous throws and, and my concern is player welfare. And it's something we flagged up to the to the RFL previously. At the minute those dangerous throws seem um, to be letting off on cautions and let's hope there's, there's no serious injuries on the back of that. And, and let's hope that those teams um, learn the lessons if you like and, and get get better educated and aren't up as much the disciplinary and, and if they are let, let, let's let's look for some consistency I know that particular incident that Paul will be disappointed with was a dangerous throw and um, I believe a Barrow player and possibly a York player has been up as well this year on dangerous throw and I wouldn't say that those two teams um, do that regularly I'd, I'd say it was probably you know a, a poor technique it wasn't something that they did, you know, intentionally. Whereas if there is a team that's up quite a lot for the same um, tackle, if you like, and, and dangerous throws and dangerous contacts and um, pressure on the neck, 
you know, there's a team up a lot on that, then it seems to me that that's something that they practice. Whereas the teams have mentioned York, Barrow, ourselves, if we've been up for, you know, dangerous contact, dangerous throw, it's a one off or it's poor technique. And it's not something that those teams um, practice. That they're all tough teams. You know, York play hard, Barrow play hard. So do we. When we play each other's physical games, but we play, you know, within the rules. And if they go outside of those rules, then obviously it's poor technique or it's, it's ill discipline. Right? It's not something that we all do on a regular basis. Whereas a team that's that's going, you know, to the disciplinary regularly. For me, that would seem that that's something that we're practicing and, and um, it's getting coached to do. Cheers, Alan. Thank you.